So they really just sort of embarrass the, the Trump defense team's request, and they don't let up for the 10 pages. That is former federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner talking about the special counsel's response to Donald Trump's request to delay the documents trial. Jack Smith hit back hard. I would agree with Andrew. Andrew, This is a persuasive court pleading. It is a model of clarity, of brevity, of persuasion. It is only 10 pages, double spaced. It's a quick, easy read. I would urge people to read it because it is clear. Jack Smith and his team don't mince words. They don't pull punches. And I I was really kind of excited when I read it because it feels like a sign of the prosecution to come. In the meantime, the issue at hand is whether jury selection should begin as scheduled in December 2023 or should it be pushed back by a year until after the November 2024 election. Trump's team argues they need the extra time to go through all the documents MSNBC host Lawrence O'Donnell read back part of the special counsel's written response. The conditions that defendants argue will make it a challenge to select a jury will not appreciably change after the completion of the election. Jack Smith's filing also called one part of the Trump argument borderline frivolous. Here is former FBI general counsel Andrew Weissman. The borderline frivolous line is in reference to something that's important. Uh, The uh, foreign president keeps on talking about the Presidential Records Act and keeps saying that's what governs this case. And that is what the government took direct aim at and said it is entirely irrelevant to this criminal case, both to the uh, retention of classified national defense information part of the case and to the obstruction case. Retention of classified documents and obstruction, that is how the government has tightly crafted this criminal case. And as much as the Trump team may invoke the Presidential Records Act, legal experts across the spectrum point out that act does not apply. But again, the more urgent issue for the court to rule on, and the point of these latest filings, is when the trial should begin. Trump wants it delayed indefinitely. Jack Smith and his team of prosecutors want to start it as scheduled in December. They are going to continue to insist on a timely trial date. And in fact, on page one of this pleading, they highlight how the the Trump defense team failed in really its most important endeavor when they filed their pleading on July 10th. They said, Judge, don't set a trial date. One of the first things Jack Smith pointed out is the Speedy Trial Act says the judge shall set a day certain for the trial to begin. So they really just sort of embarrass the the Trump defense team's request, and they don't let up for the 10 pages. Now, to be clear, pre-trial issues and motions are usually not as important or newsworthy as what happens in a trial and the verdict from a jury. But the pre-trial issue in this case of the timing is huge. If Donald Trump can push the trial until after the election and win back the presidency, he could attempt to pardon himself or have the Department of Justice squash the case against him. In that scenario, there would be a fierce legal challenge, but the odds of Trump never going to trial in that hypothetical would certainly improve for him. The Trump trial delay effort also speaks to something else. By all accounts, even from former Trump lawyers and conservative legal supporters of Donald Trump, the case against him in Florida is strong. The case is straightforward, easy to understand, and not voluminous in the documents and exhibits. In other words, if this goes in front of a fair and impartial trial jury, Trump is in trouble, and his lawyers know it. However, other federal criminal trials that are often not as high profile often get delayed for years. So all of this puts Trump appointed Judge Eileen Cannon in a delicate position. Because while most defendants do get delays, they don't get indefinite delays. And it is now clear that Donald Trump's strategy is to beat out the clock, no matter how hard he gets pummeled in special counsel court filings. By the way, in the GOP presidential nomination contest, Donald Trump is benefiting from the implosion of his top rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. It's the kind of thing that you would expect from a fringe candidate, not the person who is second in the race, uh, you know, the, the most notable alternative to Donald Trump. Check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.